welcome to the vineyard. John 15 is very near and dear to me because I am a vine dresser. This is what I do for a living. It really wasn't until, you know, I bring people out here to get them a first look at uh, what grape growing is, what wine growing is. Uh, you really get an idea of, of the hard work that it takes to produce good, great quality fruit. Um, many people here in the valley, you have tourists that come and say, oh wow, isn't it great? There's a, a lot of money and all these uh, great labels, but you know what? Uh, there are many other industries that you can uh, be in and make a lot more money for a lot less risk. So grape growing is not one of those things. You don't do it for the money. You do it because you love to grow grapes and you love the fruit, okay? Um, one thing here, guys, uh, in John 15, the Lord said, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. We're gonna walk over here briefly. And this is a 25 year old vine, 25 años. And you can see it's very mature. And if we get closer here, these were in bloom right now. Uh, so each one of these little uh, berries that you guys see is going through bloom right now. And God willing, all, every single one it will be a, a grape berry to produce a big crop. And you guys can see we got a good sized crop here. Okay, but you guys could see what? A lot of branches that are on the ground. Why? Because those are not gonna bear fruit. And you know what? It's hard work because you've got to go in here. This one's not going to bear fruit. The Lord says, every branch that does not bear fruit, he what? He takes off. He takes off. And what happens to them when they, they're taken off? They die and wither because they're not connected to the vine anymore. There's no going back. It's done. Okay? If we come closer here also, there's a reason why uh, it needs light. The Lord said He is the light of the world. And look at this. Uh, being the vine dresser, you got to go in there by hand. Did you guys know that with all this technology in Silicon Valley here, we have not developed any machine yet that you can pull in here with a tractor that will sucker, that will do the thinning that needs to be done. It still needs to be done by hand in the 21st century. Oh, uh, huh? You know? And you know what? Being a vine dresser, it's not about being a machine. You've got to get in there. You've got to get your hands dirty. And um, our, the far Father in heaven, Jesus is the vine. We are the branches, these green shoots. Okay? Look at how green and healthy they are. The Lord knows exactly what it is that we need. It takes about 36 inches about 20 leaves per shoot, this is called a shoot, to ripen two clusters of fruit. Isn't that amazing? It's not just a lot of people think, oh, what are you guys doing out there? Uh, it's not harvest. They, a lot of people think that being a grape grower is just harvesting uh, once a year and then sleeping. No, it's a lot of hard work. You gotta plan, you have to uh, thin, you gotta prune. Pruning is hard work. These branches that are uh, backwards over here, that are not exposed to light, okay? They're not gonna do well. They're, they're susceptible to mold, to diseases. They need to come off. What did, what did I just do? Cut. I cut it off. Oh my. This is the tools of the vine dresser. Okay, it's sharp. And you know what? Uh, all these also come off. Only the vine dresser has the shears, that's his job, okay? It's not our job. If it were our job, we'd wanna be able to prune others, right? Thank God that it's his ministry, uh, that our Father in Heaven is the one that does the pruning, you know? And may he continue to have mercy on us. He says, every branch in me that uh, he removes, and each that does, he still prunes anyway. There's no, there's no getting away from pruning even if you do produce fruit, right? Cuts sometimes are painful, but they need to happen. 
Did you guys also know if we didn't prune, this would be what's called overcropped. This is a finely balanced vine here. Every single one, we have 26 acres on this property, okay? Every single vine has to be thinned, pruned by hand. We harvest by hand here, okay? Because only that way can we guarantee the highest quality fruit. Verse three, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you. We just talked about that, that everything that is now down can't produce. But another thing, a lot of people don't know this, and this is a biblical term. We've used it, what are we? We are grafted in, right, um, by faith. A lot of people don't know that the DNA of the European grapevine, wine grape, comes actually originally from the Caucasus region, like Azerbaijan, Georgia, that area. It's not native to North America. It comes from Europe. It was brought here originally by the Spanish uh, missionaries, and they were planted on their own roots. Well, one thing, there are so soil-borne pests here, okay? Um, they planted them originally on their own vines by themselves. Guess what? No immunity to the pests and diseases. So they got contaminated and died. This is a rootstock. This is native to North America. This here was grafted, is, is, Euro, is European in origin. This part here above the ground, from this section up, has no immunity to many of the pests here on the ground. But as long as it abides, as long as it's grafted in to this rootstock here, this has immunity. It's got to be connected. And as long as it's not on the ground, this protects this from diseases and from pests. And Christ also says, abide in me and I in you. As long as we're connected to him, the true vine, we have immunity uh, from, from condemnation. We abide in Him. We can, apart from Him, we can do nothing. Okay, this is how they look when we plant them. This here, 20 years from now. Okay, is how it looks. It look, look at how beautiful these clusters look. After harvest, starts the pruning. Did you know that there's a lot of housekeeping that needs to be done? But there's some sections, some vines, some arms that die like this. Guess what? They have to be what? Cut off. Cut off. Also. The stuff that's on the ground, not these, but any big parts. Uh, there's sections of arms that get caught. There's a disease called Eutypa. It dries up and the arms die. And what happens, uh, pieces of dead wood, it's not over yet. Uh, pests, there's beetles and different type of worms that like to bore in there. Okay, and they, they attract pests. And they, the, the, if you don't cut them off, it'll contaminate the rest of the vine. Okay, and so anyway, what does it require? The saw uh, to be, uh, you gotta cut off those dead parts. But what does his word say? It says in verse six, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are what? Gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. Um, have you guys seen when they, what happens to guys when they pull out the vineyard? You guys seen those big piles empty? What do they do? They put those big piles, right? You think they just stay there? No, they gotta burn them. You guys know why? Because if they just leave those piles of dead wood, it attracts pests, rodents, bugs. And when you bring other bugs, they contaminate your vineyard. So you have to, it, you have to put a match to it and then they get thrown in the fire. What? So that what remains can continue to produce good fruit. Guys, you know what, guys? Um, the vine, vine dressing is hard work. But have you guys seen those big wind machines that make a lot of noise that wake you guys up at night? They don't, it sounds like World War II bombers, right? Okay. 
It's for a reason. Right now, we have the green tissue growing. You get frost that forms, right? The green tissue cells blow up. Have you seen you guys put a cluster of fruit in a, in a freezer? What happens? The cells burst. When they burst, they die, okay? They have to be protected. At 28 degrees and there's no sprinklers or wind machines, okay, you cannot let the temperature drop with green tissue more than 28 degrees or it will kill it, they will die. So what does that happen? Sometimes you have to get up, the vine dresser has to get up at 2 a.m., okay? The alarms go off, you gotta get up. In a heat, extreme heat, you gotta get up and water. Okay, when everybody else is inside in the air conditioning room, the vine dresser is out working hard, uh, watering, making sure that uh, they can sustain the heat stress. So, um, you know, the Lord picked, um, vine dressing is, is hard work, but I realize why he did it. Um, leading his church and uh, it's hard work. We, we give him a lot of grief and a lot of pain when we do not abide. You know, and there's a lot of grief, believe it or not, to see this as well. But it needs to happen in order for that fragrant, that fruit of the highest quality. Look at this. These are going to be beautiful clusters. Huh? Um, a lot of hard work. But that's how the Lord wanted it, okay? Uh, and John 15 continues to be a beautiful verse and when it will continue to be. And you guys know another thing? We haven't seen anything yet. Uh, when we go to heaven, we're gonna, be, we're gonna see the most beautiful vineyard um, and, and the most beautiful harvest. Okay, and we're all going to be part of it here. And all we got to do is what? Abide in Him, the grapevine. Who is the grapevine? Christ is. And we are the branches. Again, guys, uh, the Lord said, the Lord said the work is great, but the workers are few. And boy, he he was not kidding. Boy, do we need do we need workers? Uh, we can't find enough workers to help us out in the vineyard. We have to go out and find and beg workers to come work for us. Okay, and you know what? The Lord on the parable of, of the vineyard, what happened? He went and looked for people. Right? I'll come work in my vineyard. Okay. His word isn't just relevant for 2,000 years ago. Boy, his word is relevant today, guys. And it's your life. At the beginning of the day, at the middle of the day. Yes. At the end of the day, right? Amen. And guess what did he do, guys? He so paid them. They all got the same. Right. And you know what ended up happening? You had a couple disgruntled guys at the end. One disgruntled guy at the end. And he said, hey, you know, we've been out here in this hot sun all day. How come they, how come... You know, they get just as much as we did. What was the Lord's response? What was the Lord's response? He says, hey, you agreed to this. And he said, are you upset that I'm kind to others? And you know what? In our flesh hearts, uh, we need to be careful that we, when we see other people, or God doing work in other people in their kindness, that we don't become jealous or envious of it. That's a beautiful thing, you know? Um, and he said, his response was, friend, he said, friend, friend, what? Are you upset that I'm kind to others? Take your money and go, you know? And, and I know that, that that vineyard worker didn't like the Lord's response, <laughs> um, you know, but, uh, but you know what? It's a, it's a blessing to be able to work in the Lord's vineyard and do the type of work. Um, if I get to heaven, if He allows me to be a laborer in His vineyard, boy, I'd be dancing in, in the vineyards of heaven. That would be my dream. That would be my dream. 
And I hope that every single one of you will join me one day there. Thank you for being here today, guys. Sí, hermana. What happens when it gets too cold? Yes, during, uh, during the uh, dormant season, there's a such thing called dormancy. After harvest, after about November 30, what we get once uh, uh, these be, these are when they're green, they're called shoots. But once they lignify, meaning once they harden and are getting ready to, to produce, they turn brown. They turn like they become canes. Okay. Uh, after harvest. We get the first frost, these start to, start to turn yellow. They lose all their chlorophyll, okay? And they start to, the branches start to die, right? Uh, the, the, the vine itself hasn't died, it's just it's going into its, its winter season, okay? You don't have to do anything during the winter. When you, when it's important, it's, you, have you guys heard of bud break? When um, March, March 15th, somewhere around there, April, the uh, the young shoot but the, the young uh, buds start to push the first few uh, shoots of green they're very delicate once they push there's no going back it's like giving birth um, and uh, between April 1st and about right now Memo uh, Memorial weekend there we have had a history of frost once June 1st hits here the the probabilities of a frost happening are very very slim but if it did, if it drops to 32 degrees or less, you have to either turn the wind machines on to circulate warmer air, bring it down. You have to turn the sprinklers on. And here's the thing, you can have ice, but as long as you have ice and water, you're generating heat. Because the melting point and the freezing point are the exact same point at 32 degrees. And as long as you have, again, ice and, and water, Nothing's going to happen. You just got to make sure you got plenty of water. Okay? In a year like this, it wasn't an issue. But in a year like 2014, 2012 to 2016, you guys remember we had the drought? Some of us didn't have much water. And it was tough. So we're very blessed this year. We're very blessed. Okay? Another thing. It's His will. See, come closer, guys. Do you guys see right now? This is bloom. This is a very critical time of the year. There are four things that can interrupt bloom. You want even temperature. It's kind of like baking a cake in an oven, in a yeast. Do you guys know, in order for the yeast, the things to rise, the oven has to stay, what, a constant temperature. Too much of an increase of, of heat or a decrease right away can stop the, the, the rising process, okay? Well, the same thing with bloom. Rain. Excess heat, excess wind can interrupt and you can have scraggly berries and that can reduce your yield. So we are at the mercy of God. He determines, it rained last week during bloom, we might get slightly production, but based on, from what I can see now, boy, the Lord is good and merciful. Looks like we're gonna have a pretty good crop. Thank you, Lord. Okay, does that answer your question, Hermana Gladys? So you gotta turn on the wind machines. What things can you do? Wind machines? Sprinklers overhead and in the old days the only thing they're getting very tough here with environmental standards The old smudge pots the orchard heaters remember those that gave a lot of smoke. They're doing away with those um, In some counties they've become very strict because they, they generate a lot of smoke and uh, It's not good for the environment. So we're very environmentally friendly here. We don't we only use organic materials here like sulfur uh, sulfur is an organic element that prevent, that helps protect against uh, uh, a lot of funguses. Brimstone. Yes, brimstone. Oh, <laughs> organic, right, sister? <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other questions? Yeah, what, is, what are these little branches? These are what's called tendrils. Those are tendrils. This is what you call, there's different styles. This year, every, every vineyard has its own personality. They all need to be treated differently. Not all is the same. These are older, much more, these can handle much more stress. A vine dresser knows his vines. He knows how, what they can handle, knows their weak spots. 
okay? Uh, uh, this one here, you can see it's a quadrilateral. It's basically like a tree with four branches on each side. The, the more branches you have, the higher yield, okay? Uh, but here's the thing, with wine grapes, very different from, from regular fruit. This, in, in the valley floor, this is very fertile farmland. This is perfect for regular fruit, peaches, plums, uh, other types of stone fruit. But one thing with, with wine grapes, guys, the less fertile the soil, the more you can stress your vines, the more you can stress your vines, the more higher the quality fruit that you get, even though yield might be less. But you know what? The Lord, the vine dresser isn't looking just for yield and, and quantity. He wants quality, right? That's, that's for the Lord's will. This one here is a different varietal here. This here is a, what's called Malbec. Okay, originally from France. Uh, you could see that uh, it's younger. Also, notice, notice the way that it's uh, structured. It's a bilateral cordon, it's not four, it's only two, bilateral. Also, uh, that one doesn't have uh, vertical shoots, these, we, the, the vine dressers come here and, and your helpers in the vineyard come in. These shoots get tucked into the wire and then these eventually get topped, get uh, hedged. Originally in the old days they used to plant them like that. Wide spacing, that's a, that's a 12 by 7 spacing. This, is a, this here is a 6 by 8, meaning 6 foot vine to vine, 8 foot rows. Okay, so you have higher density, more vines per acre. A vine dresser needs to make those considerations. You can increase yield, have quality, uh, but you have to grow. So you could see these shoots, instead of growing sideways, they're growing up. So they have to grow between, they have to be, um, they have to be uh, shoot position. This is what you call shoot positioning between these wires. Okay, this is very expensive to manage. Is it more? costs more than that, absolutely. But pro produce more? Uh, it can, it can. Uh, you get more vines per acre, so higher density. So consider kind of like, like a, a rural, in, in, in terms of people, population. In an rural areas, you have less people here per square mile. If we go to San Francisco, what, you have more people, more crowds. So this is more higher density. Estas pues todavía no tienen aquello, ¿verdad? Limpias, todavía no las limpias. Ah, todavía no hemos, right. This vineyard here has not been thinned yet like that one there. So that's the next job here. That's why this, that one there looks manicured. This one still, we're going to get to it.